Hi, I'm Ingrid Peters, and I'm in the Natural Resources and Lands Group. I have the privilege of speaking with Andrew Valenis with Montana Renewable Energy about the bills that he's written and his journey trying to pass legislature. So what are some recent bills you've worked on? One of the first ones that comes to mind is a, a bill we ran in the 2021 legislative session. Uh, it was House Bill 448, and the purpose of the bill was to increase the limit for rooftop solar systems in Montana. Right now, if you're a Northwestern Energy customer, you're limited on how big of a system you can put in at, at 50 kilowatts, which is enough for residential customers, but not nearly enough for larger customers like schools, libraries, small businesses, churches. We wanted to run a bill to increase that size um, and worked on some language that specifically would have helped uh, those types of customers be able to install larger systems um, and almost got it there, fell fell a little short. We um, had great success in the House. We got it out of committee unanimously, which was quite surprising, um, but but very exciting. When we got to the House floor, I think we got 88 uh, or 87 votes, um, which again was very surprising. So, uh, it's the first time a net metering bill or a rooftop solar bill has gotten a out of committee or across the chamber um, probably in decades. Um, and then unfortunately, it got hijacked in the Senate. Um, with some amendments that didn't really go our way, and uh, we ended up having to kill it. So went through almost every piece of the legislative process from, you know, drafting it to finding a sponsor to getting it through the House and then amendments in the Senate. It went to a, um, a special subcommittee after it got out of the Senate, um, a conference committee. They had to discuss the amendments and, um, yeah, it really went through the whole kit and caboodle. What was your initial process identifying the issue? and then like choosing how to address it. So we normally start with uh, input and outreach to our members. So as a membership-based organization, we'll reach out to our members and ask them kind of what's going on with their work. Um, we get some feedback from them, normally end up populating kind of a few ideas. After that, we take it to the MRE policy committee and we start to whittle down the list of, of potential priorities. Uh, you know, you have to think about what you what you think is going to have the most impact, um, what you think might have the most support. Um, there's the complexity of the language itself, as so you want to keep it simple, um, which is always a challenge because energy issues are complex to begin with. You know, there's a lot of different re reasons to run a bill at the legislature. One of them is obviously to pass it, to, to change the law um, or add a new law. Another reason is to just make a point. You know, some people run a bill to get legislators on record voting for or against a certain idea to use for political purposes. In the lecture you gave to my class, um, you were specifically focusing on public schools, places in the community that can generate solar instead of private. And did you do that because you thought that was more likely to pass? We did that because we thought it was a better, yeah, better strategy for that bill. So the, the 50 kilowatt cap that exists right now for rooftop solar systems, most private residential customers, that limit is, is big enough for them to work with. The average residential system in Montana is about seven kilowatts and the limit's up at 50. So, you know, even a really big house with an electric vehicle and a, you know, hot tub or whatever else that's using a lot of electricity um, you know, 50 kilowatts is probably fine. So we thought if we restricted the cap increase to a certain type of customer and really focused on that small business and schools and kind of left that residential limit lower, um, we thought that might kind of loosen up some votes. How are you choosing, um, which stakeholders to target? We normally try to start with uh, kind of a strategy on on how big of a how big of a splash we want to make with a particular bill. We ran another bill that had to do with rooftop solar back in 2017, and the strategy was to make a huge splash with it. For this bill that we ran last session, we went really small. We thought it would be a better strategy to just not make a big deal of it. Do is more just, hey, this is an easy vote because it's an easy bill. You know, schools and libraries just need to be able to do bigger systems. Let's just get this done. And so we actually actively asked a lot of our colleagues not to lobby on the bill so that we could keep the conversation a little quieter and a little smaller. Um, so strategy is part of it. Um, and then a, a lot of it is just figuring out who the bill is going to impact. Um, you know, whether or not you ask somebody to join you in lobbying on a bill, um, if they're a colleague of yours, you obviously want them in the loop. 
you know, in politics, it's all about relationships and discussion. So um, you want to make sure people know what's going on and kind of what you're working on. But it's a lot of, you know, who benefits, who might get hurt by this, who's going to be interested in the conversation. You really want to make a list of all the stakeholders that you think might impact, uh, get impacted by the bill because they may show up at the hearing, you know. Where do you think MREA is headed with renewable energy policy and what's your vision for the future? Yeah, great question. Um, our vision statement has to do with uh, seeing a Montana where renewable energy is widespread, um, you know, where it's accessible to all Montanans, where it's driving economic growth. Um, I, I think the words that jumped out for me when I think about this is kind of um, acceptance and, and accessibility. We'd love to see rooftop solar and, and small wind and micro hydro be less of a contentious issue and just something that legislators can get behind. Um, Montanans generally support the technologies. It's more the political um, you know, sphere where we run into issues. And then having it be accessible, you know, having installers around all around the state, um, having good financial resources to help people pay for it, helping low-income and rural customers get access and, and things like that. Seems like a lot of young people are pretty supportive of it. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of communities, it's becoming a little more normal to see solar and on houses and stuff. I'm yeah. excited personally to see where it goes in my lifetime. We run into a lot of roadblocks up at the legislature, but whenever I leave there, I always feel like we do have momentum, right? I mean, like you said, more people are talking about it. We're solar showing up on more roofs. It's completely nonpartisan when you actually get out into, you know, communities. Montanans love solar. They love small wind. They love producing their own energy, um, just like they enjoy gathering their own food, growing their own vegetables, right? Um, it kind of aligns with the lifestyle. So I think momentum is on our side. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, getting the policies in place to help me. I personally wonder whether the, the political climate will shift a little more in favor of renewables in the next few years, and if MREA will be able to pass the bill. I think a lot of young people and bipartisan voters want to see renewable legislature, and we live in a state with lots of solar, wind, and hydro potential. And an alternative policy approach could be to write a bill expanding the energy cap for just public buildings and schools and take out the businesses part and see if a smaller scale bill can get through the Senate. Thank you so much for watching my video project and I hope you enjoy.